Let's be brutally honest here. WrestleMania 31 looks like it's going to suck. The road to WrestleMania 31 has been got off or brutally bad. I think most fans acknowledge this. Most fans are in agreement with this. And even once you get over the fact that it's WrestleMania, so by nature, as wrestling fans, we're going to get a little more amped up, a little more excited just by default. In general, we're just not that excited about the show itself and what is being brought to the table and what we're being fed. It doesn't look good. The entire road to WrestleMania seems to have been largely one big miss, and it looks like this show this year is going to be, for the most part, one big miss. And with that said, I've been struggling to find things to get excited about when it comes to this year's WrestleMania. I've been struggling for things to give me some hope. And one of those few little brief glimpses or glimmers of hope that I've had is Sting. That's right, Sting. And while I'm not getting exactly what I wanted in Sting versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania 31, the real dream match, I'm still getting Sting the last holdout, if you will, the last real outlaw from WCW, finally in a WWE ring at the biggest show of the year. And, you know, facing Triple H isn't the worst thing in the world. That's still a big-time opponent, a big-time marquee spotlight for a guy like Sting and a guy who clearly deserves it based off of his history, based off of his reputation, his accomplishments, and his career. It's one of the few things I have to hold on to when it comes to this year's WrestleMania that makes me actually want to tune in and still watch this show because a lot of this seems very forgettable to me beforehand and as a result makes me almost inclined to want to skip this year's WrestleMania. That's how bad it is. That's how much WWE's been off the mark. But one of the few things for the most part, other than the fact of the opponent they're sending them at, that they haven't been off the mark with is Sting. The WWE has done a really good job of spotlighting Sting, of featuring Sting in the way that Sting should be featured in a way to make his appearances feel big, make them matter, make them have consequence, make them have significance. And now all of a sudden you get to WrestleMania right around the corner and Triple H versus Sting in some ways does feel like a big monster money match. It feels like the real highlight attraction of this year's show. And kudos to Triple H for all the things I could say about him in the Breakfast Club, and understandably so. The one thing I will never knock the man for, the one thing I will always respect this man for a tremendous deal, is his business sense and understanding what is best for Triple H in particular. And knowing that with WrestleMania season coming around the corner, he's not about to lose that seven-figure payout. He's going to make sure that he latches on to Sting. He wants to be that guy that has the first ever match with Sting in the WWE. He wants to be remembered for that. He wants to have that as a notch on the belt. He wants that to be featured on the mantle above his fireplace someday. And by God, Triple H politicked and positioned himself to be able to get just that. And hats off to him. Hashtag Breakfast Club rules, bitches. This is why the Breakfast Club rules. It's because the Breakfast Club, every year come WrestleMania, finds a way to get themselves the hottest guys or the biggest spotlighted matches. And Triple H is a champion of that. When you look at the recent WrestleMania matches he's had, last year he had to be right in the mix when it came to Daniel Bryan. Two years ago it was Brock Lesnar. Three and four years ago it was Undertaker each time. You look at him and you sit there and say, even WrestleMania 26, Sheamus was really hot at the time as a young heel. He got him. WrestleMania 25, he main evented the show as the champion against the really hot heel Randy Orton. Triple H finds a way to get himself into these big-time spotlight matches. Well, Triple H, you got what you wanted. You got what you deserve based off of your politicking and positioning and position, positioning within the company as a whole. And now it's time for you to do the right thing. It's time for Triple H to understand his job. It's time for Triple H to understand what is best for business. It is time for Triple H to understand what needs to happen. And what needs to happen at WrestleMania 31 is that Triple H needs to put over Sting. Triple H needs to do his job and do the job for Sting. Part of the reason I say this is you've got Sting, the icon. 
the last real representation of WCW in its purest form in so many ways. The guy that for so many years was the rebel, the renegade, the outlaw in terms of he would never come to the WWE. He was one of those things that Vince always wanted into the fold but was never really able to get his grasp on. He was never really able to pull in the stinger. And now he's finally got it done. So here's this guy, after all of these years, after all of that accomplished story career, he comes here to WWE, he comes to WrestleMania 31, and in his first match, he's going to lose? How is that in any way good for business? How is that in any way something that makes any type of business sense whatsoever? Part of bringing Sting into the fold is not just from a standpoint of trying to sell some tickets and sell the WWE Network. It's about more than that. It's about trying to sell the WCW video library on your network and etc. It's about trying to move merchandise. It's about trying to bring in some of those older fans to get them to pump some money into the product. You know, this is a business decision. And the best way for the WWE to get the most return on this Sting investment is by having Sting win at WrestleMania 31 over Triple H. Especially if this isn't going to be Sting's only WrestleMania match. What sense would it make to bring Sting into the fold this year, let's say, have him lose, so that way you decided to have him have another WrestleMania match next year down in Dallas, Texas, and maybe then you have him face off against The Undertaker. How much is that really going to matter when you talk about an Undertaker that has lost finally at WrestleMania, might be looking at having lost two matches in a row, facing off against a guy in Sting that just lost his only WrestleMania match that he had against Triple H, the same guy that Undertaker beat three separate occasions at WrestleMania. This has to happen. Triple H has to put over Sting, and he has to do it right, and he has to do it big at WrestleMania. Triple H wanted this match. Well, buddy, you got this match, and now it's time for you to do the right thing because you putting over Sting at WrestleMania represents so many things to older fans like me and fans in general. After so many years of the WWE and Vince McMahon crapping on WCW, crapping all over everything about WCW, and crapping over, frankly, the fans of WCW, this would kind of be like that apology, that olive branch, that way to say, I'm sorry, that way to say, you still matter, that WCW still matter, WCW fans, you still matter. You rooting for that company and watching that company and being a fan of that company all of these years did matter. And it meant something. And it means something to us still to this day, even if it's just so you can subscribe to the network for $9.99 a month. You know, for an old WCW fan like me and many others just like me, this means a lot. This is an opportunity for us to feel like we got one over on the WWE. This is an opportunity to feel like WCW matters again. It's a chance for WCW to be relevant again. It's a chance to sit there and say, we're sorry for the crap that was the invasion angle in 2001. We're sorry for the crap we've done to so many different guys that came from WCW. Here's our olive branch. Here's our chance to say we're sorry. And when you look at it right now, WrestleMania 31, like I said, is shaping up to be a forgettable show. One of the few highlights of the show is probably going to be Triple H versus Sting. If anybody is going to get at least a good to very good match out of Sting, it's going to be Triple H. He can hold his hand, and they could possibly go make some magic happen come WrestleMania 31. And I assure you, with all the talk that's going to happen about the IC title ladder match, where we're going to be bumping like fools, or maybe Orton versus Rollins, the match that most people may be talking about at the end of that night and for years to come could very well be Triple H versus Sting because of the history, because of the story, because of what it means, because of what it represents, what could potentially be accomplished. And to sit there and trample all over that and completely dismiss that by having Triple H going over Sting does absolutely nothing whatsoever. You know, this is a guy in Triple H that sometimes he's done the right things. He did it at WrestleMania 30, putting over Daniel Bryan. You know, here's a guy that has done it going way back in 2004. He put over the Invisible Man at WrestleMania 20. 2005, WrestleMania 21, he put over Batista. The next year, he put over John Cena. I mean, he has a history at times of putting over the right guys when business calls for it to happen. He did it at 27 and 28 with Undertaker. Although, granted, it was more so just him getting a huge payout because he was working with Taker. So that's not so big of a deal because Taker is a bigger deal than Triple H. And Triple H even knows that whether or not he wants to admit it. But this is also the same Triple H that at times, you know, hasn't been on the right side of things. 2003, WrestleMania 19, didn't put over Booker T when maybe that should have happened. 
When you look at 2009, there's no reason on God's green earth Randy Orton didn't go over in that main event. So that's why Triple H went over. 2010, WrestleMania 26, Triple H had no business in the world going over Sheamus. So, of course, he did. In 2012, or excuse me, 2013, at WrestleMania 29, he had no business going over Brock Lesnar, and yet he did. Praise God! So my fear is that you were going to get that Triple H come WrestleMania 31. The guy that not only wants that notch on the belt of having wrestled Sting at WrestleMania, being Sting's first ever, maybe only match ever in WWE, but that he wants the notch on the belt that he was the guy that could beat Sting at WrestleMania 31. And he's the guy that once and for all cemented WWE's legacy like it fucking matters. And once and for all dismissed the crap hole that was WCW. Now Triple H needs to understand what is best for business. And what is best for business is not bringing in Sting at WrestleMania 31 to wrestle his first ever match in the WWE and have him lose. Nobody benefits. That doesn't help anything at all. And the whole argument of, well, Triple H is there all the time. Why is he losing to a part-timer? Well, frankly, from an in-ring standpoint, Triple H is a part-timer too. Furthermore, Triple H is Triple H. If you sit there and talk about it for years, about how it doesn't matter if Chris Jericho loses every fucking time because he's a legend and da-da-da. Well, what the hell is Triple H? Triple H surely is more significant than Chris Jericho in the grand scheme of things. It's true. It's fucking ugly. True. So he doesn't need this. Hell, for all we know, next year Triple H is getting the rock at WrestleMania 32. He can battle it out in politic at that point in time and figure out whether he's going to win that damn match or not. But right here, right now, the right thing to do for Triple H, for Sting, for us fans, for the WWE, is for Triple H to do his job, and that is do the job at WrestleMania 31. Because on a show that looks like it's going to lack highlights, a show that is clearly going to be, for the most part, forgettable and clearly lack memorable things, it could be one of those few memorable moments from that entire show. It could be one of those few things that helps gloss over the suck fest that is going to be that night, March 29, 2015. Seeing Sting, WCW's representation, Sting, WCW's last holdout for so many years, come to WWE and win one for WCW and stick it to Vince McMahon and Triple H and everybody involved with WWE. If you don't think it's that important, if you don't think it matters that much, then I don't know what bubble you're living in. It's got me so excited, I've got gas coming out of my mouth. Seriously, Sting has to go over at WrestleMania 31. Triple H must put him over at WrestleMania 31. It's the right thing to do. It's the right time to do it. And I'm going to at least be somewhat confident that Triple H understands this, that Triple H gets this, Triple H realizes this, and that Triple H is a smart enough businessman to understand the greater good here, that Triple H is smart enough to understand what is at stake for the business of the WWE, and he does the right thing, and that is put over the stinger at WrestleMania 31. Ow!